The majority of these patients that serve the outpatient clinic would have nowhere else to go for their medical care. We are essentially their medical home. We have a case manager on staff who helps with other things such as that are non-medically related. So rent, housing, food assistance. So we can really provide care to the entire patient and try to meet the best of their needs. They trust us here in the clinic and at Virginia Hospital Center, and they are very open to coming to us with their needs and concerns. And we wanna do the best that we can to care for them. As you know, that if the other things in our lives are not going well, such as shelter and food, our health kind of falls by the wayside. A lot of these patients are cared for under the charity budget of Virginia Hospital Center. And Michelle, we have a question from the audience. How do patients get referred to the clinic? Okay, so that's a great question. We partner with other members of the community in order to, find, to get patients here. We don't advertise and we've really found that we don't need to. It's really word of mouth. But if you know somebody that is uninsured or underinsured and they're an adult and they live in Arlington and they need medical care, they can come here. So often it's by word of mouth that we get these referrals. We also partner with other departments such as the free clinic and the health department. And we all know what each other does in our departments. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But what we do is we work together to ensure that we're all providing care for our patients. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about the partnership with Virginia Hospital Center Pediatrics. So imagine what we do caring for the adult population that is low income and underinsured. The hospital has really done a great job of also caring for the children that are low income and underinsured. You may have heard of Virginia Hospital Center Pediatrics and its previous name was Arlington Pediatric Center. They were located on Carlin Springs and recently moved to the corner of Columbia Pike and Glebe Road. It's a beautiful facility. The hospital renovated the second floor of that Bank of America building. And it's really nice. If any of you would love to come for a tour, we'd love to have you. And what we do there is we see children that meet the same population criteria. These are uninsured or underinsured children in, that live in Arlington County. They see between 80 to 100 children per day, which totals about 1,500 kids per month. So think about all these kids if they did not have access to this medical facility. We give out 10,000 vaccines a year there. So these are children, again, that otherwise would have very difficult access to healthcare. In Arlington County, there are very few pediatricians that take Medicaid. 90% of the children that go to Virginia Hospital Center Pediatrics have Medicaid. So really these kids would not have anywhere else to go for their medical care. So we're very thankful that the hospital supports this mission and vision to care for the low income population in Arlington. Next, we're gonna talk about the relationship between Arlington Free Clinic. So many of you have probably heard about Arlington Free Clinic. They're also a healthcare community organization that supports uninsured patients. The really cool thing about Arlington is that there's many what we call safety nets in Arlington. And we all work together as not to duplicate services. So for example, a patient that is seen in the Arlington Free Clinic would not necessarily come here unless there's something that the free clinic cannot help them with. For example, the Arlington Free Clinic does not provide OB services or care to pregnant women. They actually refer the pregnant women here. And then when the woman is finished with her pregnancy and she's given birth, she will return to Arlington Free Clinic to be a patient there. In this clinic, I don't have the ability to do mental health or dental services. So I can take care of the medical care here in this clinic, but then I would refer the patient to Arlington Free Clinic to receive dental care as they have dental chairs. So we're really proud of this collaboration in which we don't duplicate services, but we actually support each other. We also work with the health department as well in giving care in, in, for our patients and things that they do not have access for, but we do. So now we're gonna move to show you the telemedicine area in the clinic. As we go there, I'm gonna stop by and show you some things along the way. Let's go. So this is one of our nurses, Jean. Hi. <laughs> this, is, this is where they provide care for our patients. Hello. 
Thank you. As we walk through the clinic, this is our nurse's station. So this is where the com everything kind of comes together. If you see in the background, you'll see patient rooms and you also see small cubby triage areas. This is where we provide care for our patients and everybody congregates at the nurse's station to take care, to touch base with nurses and medical assistants. Right now people are at lunch, so you don't see it, but usually we're very busy. This is our doctor's room that we're about to enter, and this is where we have our telemedicine equipment set up. So I'd like to show you our telemedicine equipment. This is what we use to do telemedicine for our patients. We developed a telemedicine program about three to four years ago, and we've been working on it constantly to improve how we provide telemedicine to our patients. So this is the device, I'll show you how it works. Essentially, we do a double monitor. We're gonna have our nurse step by. So we have a double monitor system set up here. What we do is the physician would sit here, they would use this noise canceling headphones and it has a microphone attached. This way they don't hear anything else going on in the room and they can focus just on the patient. The patient can hear them speak very well through this microphone. This is the camera. So as the physician is seated here, they can see through the camera, but the patient can see them on the other end with their camera. The patient just uses their cell phone or any other electronic device to pull up the telemedicine visit. So this, for example, would be the patient's chart that the provider can be looking at during the visit. And then over here is where the patient's picture would come up. On the other side, the patient sees the physician, but here the patient would be the physician would be seeing the patient. So it's a really nice setup because they're having that virtual face-to-face -face visit. And we have found that when we do the telemedicine visits in combination with in-person visits, our patients are more compliant, they're more likely to take their medications, and they feel like they're more involved in their care. Recently with the pandemic, we've increased our telemedicine visits by a large amount. We used to average about 75 telemedicine visits per month. And since the pandemic, last month, we did 328 telemedicine visits. So it's been a great way for our physicians and our patients to keep in touch with each other throughout the pandemic. We've been doing telemedicine for three years, long before it became popular with the pandemic. And what we have found with this patient population, they often work in DC as hotel, restaurant, workers, it's very challenging for them to come all the way to Arlington on public transportation for a patient for a medical visit. It often takes them four hours to travel and then they come here for their appointment. By having the telemedicine visit, it really cuts that down. They can take a quick 15 minute break from their job and just do the interaction with the physician. It decreases the worries of transportation, thinking about childcare and having to figure out they might have some lost income. It's really been a beneficial program. One question from the audience. What are the exact specialties that the clinic offers? Okay, so we provide this. The question was regarding the specialties that the clinic offers. So we provide internal medicine, which is basic medical care, covers all parts of the body. The next one we do is OB. So we see pregnant patients here and we will take care of them prenatally up until the time of delivery. And then after delivery, they can come here for their postnatal care. We have a GYN clinic. So that's gynecological issues for women anywhere from 18 to end of life. We have an orthopedic clinic. So he handles broken bones, pain, injections. He will also do surgery. Not necessarily in the clinic, but he'll schedule the patients to do the surgery in the hospital. We have a breast health. So those are physicians that we have patients that we suspect anything going on with breast cancer. So we, you know, the doctor will explore the lumps and bumps, send them for further testing and send them for a, um, surgery if necessary. We also have an endocrine clinic, which is relatively new, but we're very excited. So those are patients that have issues with diabetes and specialty endocrine things. 
So these are all services that we are able to provide to our patients without them necessarily having to go and see a specialist. Thank you for that question. So I wanna talk a little bit about um, our partnership with Georgetown University. So we have residents that come into the clinic that are coming from Georgetown University. This is a collaboration between Virginia Hospital Center and the university. So those residents work in our clinic and they really have to think about this patient population and how to treat them and best care for them. So when prescribing medications or sending the patients for additional treatment, we really have to consider cost because these patients don't have insurance. They are paying for things out of pocket. So the cost of a generic medication versus a brand medication is really a big difference. So our residents learn to work within the needs of our patients in order to best meet their needs. So as we look, you can see our residents working here. This is our workroom. I want to highlight the work that one of our OB residents has done. Her name is Dr. Melissa Duncanson, and she decided that with her stimulus check, she wanted to do something to help the patients at the outpatient clinic. One of the big needs for the patients in this clinic is food. As you know, fruits and vegetables are the most expensive thing in the supermarket. It's easy to buy a bag of chips or a box of crackers, and it really fills people up. But what is a healthy option and alternative is fruits and vegetables. So what Dr. Duncanson did was she partnered with a local farmer's market that could deliver bags of produce to our patients. Over time, she has raised over $20,000 to support this team. It started with her small stimulus check and that of a couple of colleagues, and now it's over $20,000. So the farmer's market comes to our clinic twice a week and delivers huge bags of fresh produce. If I had one, I would show it to you, but they deliver them on Mondays and Thursdays. And we give them out on Tuesdays and Fridays during our OB clinic time. And I have to tell you, it's amazing for these moms to receive a huge bag full of fruits and vegetables, because these are not things that this patient population buys when they go to the supermarket. So it really makes a big deal and a huge impact. And with the continued effort that she has, with raising the funds, we'll be able to do this for at least the next couple of months. So we're very excited about that. We're very proud and it shows the relationship between the physicians here and how much they care for the patients. And we have a question from one of our members. What services are you looking to add in the future? So any services, specialty services that we can add to our care that we provide to our patients is beneficial. The thing that is very challenging for our patients is specialty care. Think about any time you've gone to see a cardiologist or a GI doctor or anything like that. If you don't have insurance, the first visit is at least three to $400. And if you're going to see a specialist, you probably need more than just one visit. So one of our needs here has been neurology and mental health services. As you can imagine, there are a lot of other things that go on with these patients related to their care that impacts their mental health. And without having insurance, there is not a lot of access to mental health care. Neurology as well, for patients that have seizure disorders and things like that, the neurologist is able to provide more specialized treatment. So if you know anybody that has specialty in these areas, we would love to talk to them about coming to serve our patients here in the outpatient clinic. And then a question from one of our co-chairs, how do people who don't have computers connect for their telemedicine visits? So that's a good question. When it comes to telemedicine, it requires a smartphone or a laptop or a computer. And we thought initially that this would be a problem for our patients. But fortunately, nowadays, almost everybody has a smartphone because you can get them very cheap and do different payment plans. It might not be the most sophisticated cell phone, but most of our patients do have cell phones. So unfortunately, if you do not have a smartphone, you cannot participate or a smart device, However, we have found that with some of our population that doesn't necessarily have a smartphone, their children or grandchildren have a smartphone or a laptop, and they've been able to connect through them. So we've only had about two patients over the course of our three years 
that have not been able to participate in telemedicine due to not having the appropriate technology. But really, for the most part, we're able to serve all of our patients. So we're going to move now to another room, and we'll, sh we'll talk a little bit more. So here we are in one of the patient exam rooms. As you can see, this is what the exam room looks like. It's set up with the traditional table. We have a small, what we call a nightstand that has supplies that the physician may need while they're doing their procedure. We have computers in all the rooms, so it allows us to document at the same time while we're seeing the patients. The rooms have a good size and plenty of seating for the patient and anybody else who might be visiting with that patient. So now I'd like to talk a little bit about the impact of your supply drive. As I mentioned earlier, we're so proud and honored by the, what you all raised for our clinic. Philanthropy is a huge part of the clinic budget. As you can imagine, I receive payment for the staff and salaries of the staff that work here, but there's so much more that we want to help our patients with. They don't have the access like you and I do to other things. They are barely trying to survive by working and making ends meet with their rent and daily expenses. Any size of donation is beneficial and impactful to our patients and our clinic. So here on the table, I have some things I'd like to show you. This is an example of the blood pressure cuffs that you donated. You all donated 51 blood pressure cuffs. These blood pressure cuffs this is an example of the blood pressure cuff. And this is the part that they put on their arm and it connects to this machine. As you can see, it's a nice large display so that patients can read it regardless of what their eyesight limitations are. The blood pressure cuffs came in this really nice case. So again, it's great storage for the patients so they can just stick the blood pressure cuff here. This rolls up and fits inside here. It also came with an AC adapter, which is very important because batteries are expensive. And if you're checking your blood pressure often, the batteries are gonna run out. And to have to go buy big batteries, that can be like $15. Again, we don't want that expense for our patients. So here's the AC adapter, and it all fits really nicely in this case. It zips up, and then the patients can store it or carry it with them wherever they need to go. So these are the blood pressure cuffs that you all raised for us. And we're very excited about having them. Blood pressure cuffs play a very impactful role in our patient's care. We have patients that have high blood pressure, and instead of them having to come in and out of the department frequently for their appointments, we can give them this blood pressure cuff, give them a log, and they can monitor their blood pressure, and then just give us that log over the phone or in a telemedicine visit. It makes a big difference for these patients to not have to be leaving their home just to have their blood pressure taken. We give these blood pressure cuffs out to our adult patients and we give them out to pregnant patients. High blood pressure in pregnancy is a frequent thing. And again, anything we can do to support the mom and minimize the amount of times that she has to take off of work to come into an appointment is very valuable. The other item that your, your group donated to us were gift cards. So you donated 33 gift cards, local supermarkets, to Amazon. This is huge. $25 gift cards go a long way. The patients can use these for food or for their medications if they're ordering from a pharmacy. With Amazon, they can buy things for their children if they need baby supplies or just items for their everyday house and use. These donations are huge and it makes such an impact because oftentimes when we're taking care of our patients, we're taking care of their medical needs. Then they say to us, by the way, I don't have enough food to feed my family this month, or I really need to buy a stroller for my baby because I rely on public transportation and I find that I am carrying them all the time. So all of these donations help. 
thank you so much for what you've done. And Michelle, we have a question. Do clinic patients have to live in Arlington? So the question is, do clinic patients have to live in Arlington? And the answer is yes. Virginia Hospital Center is located in Arlington and they have decided they want to help the low income patients that live in our neighborhoods and our county. There are other clinics similar to ours in Alexandria and in Fairfax. So we focus mainly on patients that live in Arlington. So I'd like to share with you a couple of other in-kind donations. So this is a pack and play. If any of you have had children recently or know of what these, these are like play pens and they're portable. Children use them to sleep or to play in. These pack and plays are great. They're not very big, but they fit perfectly for a child to sleep in up to the age of four. I have two small children and when they were up until that age, I had multiple pack and plays. I would take them to the grandparents' house or on vacations, anywhere we went. It's a portable crib or a play area for the baby. And as you can see, it's a very small size. It's not big, it doesn't take up a lot of space. So this in-kind donation came from the need to have these moms put their babies in a safe place to sleep at night. We were talking to our patients a few years ago and we go over things with the pregnant women and we say, do you have what you need to bring the baby home? Oftentimes we think about diapers and formula and blankets and clothes. But we asked the mom, where are you gonna put the new baby to sleep? She said, I don't have a crib, I can't afford one. I will do what other people do and just pull out a dresser drawer, place it on the floor, and line it with blankets. This story broke our heart because this mom knew that the baby needed a safe place to sleep. She knew the baby should not sleep with her or with other children, but this is really all that she had. So this in-kind donation has come about from really recognizing that need and thinking, how can we help these moms? So we are able to provide moms that don't have a safe place to put their baby to sleep with a pack and play and the moms just show relief on their face. It is such a big deal to have one less thing to worry about. Imagine bringing in a new baby in a country where you don't necessarily speak the language and you're not familiar with the culture and you're working two or three jobs to make ends meet. Any small donation can help. Something else I'd like to talk to you about are insulin kits. So if any of you are diabetics or know people that are diabetics, you know there's a lot that goes with being a diabetic. You have to check your blood sugar, you have to um, use a lancet and a strip. These blood, pressure blood sugar machines are not expensive, but what is expensive are the strips. If you see here, there are 50 strips. If you're a pregnant diabetic woman, you have to check your blood sugar four times a day. So 50 strips is not going to last very long. And these 50 strips cost $25 in the store. So if you're thinking about spending $25 a week and you don't already have a lot of money, are you gonna spend it on strips to check your blood sugar? Or are you gonna spend it on food or other things that your family needs? So think about it as when you buy razors. If you buy a razor, the razor is practically free. It's very cheap. But what is expensive is the cartridges of the individual razors, the razor blades. That's how it works with glucose supplies. The meter is practically free. Anybody can get you a meter. But what costs money are the strips. And the strips are what you use. It's a one-time use. You cannot use them again. So again, these are things that are necessary for our patients and able to support them. Because if you can check your blood sugar four times a day, you're gonna be more involved in your care and more aware of how to take care of yourself so that you can minimize the diabetes. Especially for those pregnant women, you're actually saving two lives. You're saving the baby's life and the mother's life by making sure that the blood sugar is under control. Something else we like to provide to our patients is nutritional supplies. So these are measuring cups, very basic, very easy items. But we teach them about portion control because all of us could go into a restaurant and order a meal and we could order the same meal in three different restaurants and we're gonna get three different size portions. 
So when I talk to families about eating one cup of rice, my view of one cup of rice might be different from their one cup of rice. So we give them these measuring cups and we say, you should only be eating a fourth of certain portions and some, a different portion amount of different things. And this is very basic, but it really goes a long way to help them understand portion control. And when you're a diabetic or you're trying to prevent diabetes, it's very important to con consider portion sizes. Also, we have these portion plates. So these are nice laminated cards. Again, we have to purchase these. These are not free. And it gives us the ability to show our patients what their plate should look like. So what is the recommended amount of meat versus vegetables that you should have on your plate? What are the greatest needs right now for the clinic? So we have two areas that need to be filled right now. The first one is the diabetic supplies for our pregnant moms. I showed you these supplies and this is what we give to the pregnant moms. However, we don't have enough to give it to all of the moms. Right now, we have to prioritize who is most in need to give them these supplies. Our goal is to provide them with these supplies the duration of their pregnancy. Pregnancy is nine months. So you can imagine how often we're having to give them the strips and the lancets. The lancets are what they use to prick their finger. It's a small needle. These are both only able to be used one time. So this is a need we have right now for our pregnant diabetic moms, to be able to give them the support and the tools they need to monitor their blood sugar. Another need we have right now is for the Virginia Hospital Center Pediatric Department. We do a school supply drive for them in early August. As you can imagine, school supplies are expensive. And if you have multiple children, that's an added expense that you did not necessarily plan to do. So we partner with people that say, we would like to help out with these school supplies. It can be backpacks, crayons, pencils, anything that you know is a school supply that is beneficial to our kids. And this is a great help to these kids because they don't wanna feel left out when everyone's going back to school and has new sharpened pencils and crayons and backpacks. We want them to feel like they can be a part of that as well. So really helping us collect school supplies for these children is a great need. And we would love to partner with the Women's Health Circle on any of these needs as you feel appropriate for your group. Colleen can share more information with you about that. And Michelle, we have a question about prescription assistance. Does the clinic provide prescription assistance? Is there a program for that to help your patients? So the question is regarding prescription assistance. And that's a very good point because we talked a lot about providing medical care today, but what happens when a patient needs medications? Medications are expensive. If you've ever taken an inhaler for asthma, there is no generic brand of asthma inhalers or any type of inhalers. And the inhalers start at about $200 to $300. So again, think about that pregnant mom who, is a, who has asthma. How are we gonna support her? And how is she gonna afford an inhaler for two to $300? Currently, we have some in-kind donations that come in designated for pharmacy assistance. However, the needs are very great when it comes to medication assistance. We partner with the Virginia Hospital Center Outpatient Pharmacy. If you're familiar with it, it's located next to the cafeteria. And when we receive in-kind donations, we use that to offset the cost of the medications. But we do not have money in our budget to provide medication assistance. So if that's something that you would like to help with, it would be greatly appreciated and a big help to our patients. And that is all our questions from our audience. I just wanted to thank Michelle for taking the time on behalf of the Women's Health Circle. Um, this was so helpful to show their impact. I know that they'll really appreciate it. And thanks to everybody for tuning in today. Um, we will definitely be partnering with the Outpatient Clinic and BHC Pediatrics in the future. Thank you again, Michelle. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us.